Welcome to another video. We will make an attempt at knowing the number of digits in any factorial. The sample for today is 1000 factorial, which means we're going to multiply 1000 by 999 by 998, and we're going to keep going down until we get to 1, and we say, okay, the answer we have how many digits? So we start counting. How many digits are we going to get? That's the mission. Now, we're not just going to focus on 1,000. We're going to do it for any value of any number. Now, in this video, I'm not going to use Sterling's approximation, which I know is an alternative. But just so you know, what I'm going to show in this video is the precursor to the Stirling's approximation. It's actually a modification of what I'm going to show you. So let's just use logic and basic mathematics to be able to do this. And once we're done, we're going to give this a shot. Let's get into the video. So what I'm going to talk about first is basic algebra. So if I say how many digits are in 12, everybody knows it's two, right? How many digits are, but hey, let's try to write this in standard form. If we write this in standard form, we can write it as one or scientific notation. That's what we say, 1.2 times 10 to the first Power. Based on this and based on this, you're going to say, how many digits do I have here? Well, your focus should not be on this number. Your focus should be on this number. The number here is 1. So if you add 1 to it, it becomes 2. So whatever you see here, add it, add 1 to it, that tells you the number of digits in the number. It's just it. So it is the ceiling of what you would get if you take the logarithm. Let's take another example. Let's take, um, say, 144. 144 in standard notation is 1.44 times 10 to the second. Do you notice that this has three digits and what you have here is two? So if you add one to this, you're going to get this answer. Do we know what four factorial is? We don't know. But we know that 4 factorial is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. But we can express it in standard form unless we can compute the actual value. What if we don't know how to? Or the number is so big that we cannot compute it. That's when logarithms will come in. And the safest logarithms when it comes to the number of digits is base 10. So let's go back here, okay? So if I want to take the logarithm of 12, it is the same thing as taking the logarithm of 1.2 times 10 to the first power. According to the laws of logarithms, I can separate this into log of, this is base 10, don't forget. So if I don't put 10, you know it is base 10, okay? I don't want to be writing this 10. Um, so this is base 10, base 10. Okay, so I'm not going to, I'm going to stop writing it. Now look at this. The logarithm of 1.2 can be added to the logarithm of 10 to the 1. This is base 10, right? Logarithm of 1.2, any number that is less than 10, the logarithm is 0 point something. Okay, so what we have here is 0 point something plus this is 1, this 1 comes here, and 10, let's just put it so you can see what I'm saying. So this is going to be plus 1. And what you have here is 0 point something. It doesn't matter what it is, it's 0 point something. So 0 point, let me say, let me actually check it. Okay, so this is accurate. So this is 0 0.079, 0 0.079. So when we add this up, it's going to be 1. 0.079. So how does this tell us the number of digits? Remember what I said, you have to add one. 
So it is the ceiling of this number. Now, for those of you who say, when do we use the ceiling function or the floor function? This is where it becomes relevant. So what's the ceiling of this number? It is two. And that tells you that it is a two digit number that we obtained. So if we do the same thing for any factorial, even if you don't know what the final answer is, if you can find something that looks like this and you take the ceiling of it, you're good just by taking the logarithms of the numbers. Okay. Now let's do that here. We know that four times three times two times one is gonna be 24. So there are two digits in the answer. But assuming we don't know how to do multiplication, we're gonna apply the log rule. We're gonna say log of four factorial will be equal to log four times three, but that means it's addition. You see that? Log two plus log one, but we're going to take the ceiling of the answer we get because we need to add one to whatever we get, right? Okay, so what is log four? Well, I'll have to write all that. I'm going to write this. Remember, this is all in base 10. Is the ceiling of 1.3 something. What is the ceiling of 1.3? It's two. So even if we don't know how to multiply this out, we can tell that four factorial is going to contain two digits. And that's what we're going to do for 1000 factorial or for any number. Okay, what if it is 1000 and you, you can't take the log of 1000 digits? Well, there's a shortcut to it. Okay, let's do it. Now I'm going to use X instead of N because I don't want what I'm doing to be restricted to natural numbers or just integers. So I'm going to use the pi function or the gamma function that is shifted. So I'm going to define the factorial as X factorial is equal to X times X minus one times X minus two times. It's going to keep going until I get to two times one. That's my definition of the factorial because now I'm thinking of the pi function that is continuous. So, and because I said we don't know what we're gonna do, so we're gonna assume that if we take the log base 10 of what we have here, we're gonna get our answer, the number of digits by taking the ceiling. That's it. So, how do we take the log of this? Well, we just do the same thing I did. We take the logarithm of both sides. So let's box this. The number of digits we're looking for is the ceiling of x factorial. So we say log base 10 of x factorial must be equal to log base 10 of x times x minus 1 times x minus 2 times tap, 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 2 times 1 right there. And we know from our laws of logarithms that this will become log base 10 of x plus log base 10 of x minus 1, like that, plus tap, tap, tap to the last one, log base 10 of 1. That, that's basically what we're doing, okay? Obviously, this is 0, but there's going to be log of 2, and then we're going to keep going until whatever x we're using. Looking at what I have, it is the sum of a bunch of log x, log x. It is just getting smaller and smaller and smaller. It looks like a Riemann sum. Yeah. So if I add starting from 1 all the way to whatever this number is, I'm going to get my answer. So this basically looks like this. This is equal to the sum of a bunch of log base 10 of x, where the value of each of the things I'm adding is changing starting from 1 all the way to whatever the value of x is. So let's say x is, let's use n, okay? I try not to use n because I don't want you to think it's a natural number, but it's just any number, okay? This is what I need to do. And the Riemann sum of this is just an integral. Log base 10 of x factorial is the same thing as this 
nice sum of instead of writing base 10 actually I am going to write change this base to natural log of x over natural log of 10 so let's still write it n we have 1 and we're going to have ln x over ln 10. So remember that a Riemann sum is not exactly the value of the integral, but they're very close, especially if you make reasonable adjustments. Sometimes you're doing an overestimate, sometimes you're doing an underestimate, but if you try to stay in the middle, you, you're more likely to be correct, especially if your number of rectangles is not going to infinity which we're not getting here. We're not looking for infinity. We want something that works everywhere. So I think it's safer to stay in the middle, but I'm gonna show you what's gonna happen. So this becomes the integral from one to n, okay? So I'm gonna write this as one over ln of 10 ln x dx, okay? And this is equal to, oh, this goes to n. So th this is equal to so this is equal to 1 over ln 10. If I integrate ln of x, I don't want to spend time integrating this. ln of x integrated is using um, integration by parts. You're going to get x ln x minus x ln x minus x. If you do integration by parts, the DI method is the faster way or fastest way. And then we can evaluate this. You see, starting from 1 to n over ln of 10 times, you're going to plug in n, you're going to have n ln n minus n, okay? Then we're going to be subtracting this one. It's going to be, if you plug in 1 here, it's going to be 1 times ln of 1, but ln of 1 is 0. So don't worry about this. If you plug in 1 here, it's going to be minus 1. So this ultimately gives us an answer. It's n ln n minus n plus 1. It is n ln n minus n plus 1 over ln of 10. And that is log base 10 of x. Now, since I've changed it to n, this has to change to n factorial. And what did I say? That the ceiling of this log base 10 is the number of digits that we're looking for. That was the claim. The number of digits of x factorial, well, this is the ceiling of the log base 10. So I just found the formula for finding the number of digits. Now we're gonna experiment and just try four or five. Well, we know five factorial is 120, so there are three digits. Okay, and 4 factorial is 24, and there are two digits. This worked for every number that I tried it for, except 5. Somehow it just didn't work for 5. It was one off, but it worked for every other number, even up to 100. It worked for every other number, but it didn't work for 1,000. And I kept going, what really is going on? And then remember what I said. If you take... A right Riemann sum, there might be some imbalance. You take the left Riemann sum, there might be some imbalance. And in order to save yourself, you might just hang in the middle. So what I did was I adjusted the position of the point I'm using in the Riemann sum. So my Riemann sum went all the way like this. Okay. So normally this is what you'll be doing. It's either you take these points and you say, okay, I'm using the right Riemann sum, or you take this point and say, I'm using the left Riemann point, the sum. But what I did was I'm going to stick in the middle, okay? So I'm going to add half of it, so I'm using the midpoint. Okay, so if I use the midpoint, I am more likely to have less error and balance things out. Well, that's what I did. Instead of taking n to be 1 at any point or to be 10, I made it to be a little bit, I shifted it, you know. So it became n plus 1 half or n.5. 
leave a comment in the comment section. Just let me know if what I'm doing is also illegal. So with that adjustment in mind, I am going to rewrite this generally. I'm going to switch back to X because I can plug in anything and I can say this formula was what was adjusted, I think, what was modified for Sterling's, maybe this one, what was modified for Sterling's approximation. I have to go back and study that, okay? But this one makes sense. It makes a lot of sense, right? So let's try 1,000. Cha -da -da -da. It's gonna be 1,000 plus one half will be 1,000.5 ln of 1,000.5 minus 1,000.5 plus one divided by natural log of 10. Now this, you, I can plug into my calculator and get the answer. Let me do that. Oh, that's what we got, 2567.64. Okay, let's go. Six, eight, that is the number of digits in 1000 factorial. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.